Are you worried about the consistency of modules used in your Terraform configurations? Well, I have a tool that just might help. What's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, nedinthecloud.com, and today's topic is something that I created. It's a tool I made. It's called TerraHash. I want to walk you through what the tool is, why I created it, how it works, and then ask you for a little favor. I, I would like some feedback about it. So that's what we're gonna be covering today. This is gonna be the summer of interesting Terraform tools. And I'm gonna start with one that I created, but if you have suggestions for other interesting Terraform tools that are out there that you'd like me to take a look at, uh, either ping me on LinkedIn or leave a comment down below and I'll try to do like one a month or maybe even two a month. Who knows? See how many tools I can get through before the summer has passed us by. With that out of the way, let's get into TerraHash and what it is. In order to understand the usefulness of TerraHash, it's important to understand the usefulness of the Terraform lock file that gets generated when you run Terraform in it. So if you've never looked at that file before, essentially what it is, is a log of the current versions of the providers being used by your configuration, as well as the version constraint for each of those providers. Why would you want that information? Well, for consistency's sake. If I'm going to be developing locally, but deploying remotely on some sort of CI CD system, I wanna know that the version of the providers being used by that CI CD system is consistent with what I have locally. And if anybody else is gonna work on this configuration as well, I want them to be using the same versions of the providers as well. And that's what the lock file does. Once the lock file is created, those are the versions of the provider that Terraform will use wherever it's initialized as long as it sees that lock file. And it won't use newer versions of the provider unless you run Terraform in it with the dash upgrade flag. That's great for providers. That lets you lock your providers down to a specific version and know that it's going to be used consistently throughout your different configurations. Now, how could you address the same thing with modules? That's the problem that I was trying to solve with TerraHash. There's actually two things that I wanted to address when it comes to the TerraHash project and modules. The first was to duplicate some of the functionality that Terraform has with the lock file today. Now that is specifically for providers. I wanted to have the same sort of thing for modules where I would create a lock file for the modules that records the module and the version being used. And then if you run TerraHash again with a check command, it'll check and make sure that the versions of the modules that you're using in your config match what's in the lock file. So providing that check functionality and then allowing you to upgrade those versions of the modules when you want. Now, staying on a specific version of a module is pretty straightforward when it comes to using something from a registry. The version argument inside the module block allows you to set it to a specific version of the module, and that's actually what I recommend you do in general to avoid accidentally upgrading to something in a module that might break what you're doing today. The other thing that I wanted to address was the fact that maintainers of modules could in theory update the contents of their module and republish it under the same version number and you'd be none the wiser. So how do you catch that? Well, you can do that by creating a hash of the module, the contents of the module directory that's pulled down locally, and then comparing that hash to the hash that's in the lock file. If those hashes don't match, even if the version is the same, Something's changed about that module, and we shouldn't accept that update without vetting the contents of that module. This can protect you from changes that happen on modules that are stored in the public registry that you've already vetted through your security team. So those are the two things I wanted to address. Let's take a look at how the tool works to gain a better understanding of how it's addressing both of those issues. Okay, in Visual Studio Code, I have the repository open for TerraHash. And in there, I have a testing directory and a basic VNet configuration that goes in a subdirectory. Let's take a look at the contents of that configuration and what modules we're going to be using. Looking in main, we have a few different modules being used here. The first one is the VNet module that comes from the public registry, and it's version 4.1.0. 
Then we have a module that's sourced internally from the modules directory. That's not something that we want to keep a hash of because we're the ones maintaining that module in that subdirectory. And then finally, we're using another module that's also sourced from the public registry. It's the Cloud Posse label null module, and it's pinned to version 0.25.0. That's what's in the configuration. Now let's walk through the various commands that are available for the terahash binary. Opening up a terminal, I'll type in just terahash by itself, and that will give us the available commands that we can use with terahash. The important ones to note here are init, which creates the mod lock file if it doesn't already exist, check, which verifies that the modules in the configuration match what's in the mod lock file, upgrade, which will upgrade the contents of the lock file from the configuration, help, which will print out this helpful help area, and also version, which will get the version of Terahash. Let's see what version we're currently using. By typing in Terahash version, I get back that we are on version 0.0.7, this is brand new, all right? I have just written this over the past week, so it's very much in a use at your own risk kind of stage, but I did want to demonstrate the version. With that in mind, let's run terahash init to create our module lock file. When I run terahash init, I get back the fact that I haven't actually initialized Terraform yet. Terahash relies on the fact that you've initialized your Terraform configuration and that it can look inside of the .terraform slash modules directory for any modules that are being used by your configuration. So I'll run Terraform init first. Now that I've run Terraform init, the .terraform directory exists and inside of there is the modules directory, which has the modules that were downloaded as well as a modules.json file that lists out all the modules being used by our configuration. That's gonna be very important for the functioning of Terahash. Now let's run Terahash init again, and it should create our module lock file. And boom, this thing runs really fast because it doesn't have a lot to do. It found the two public registry modules that we're using, so it's not a local module and it's not the root module. Those are filtered out. It lists out a table of the name, which is going to be the module label name in our configuration, the version of the module being used and where it's sourced from. And then it's gonna add those two modules to a lock file, which is called .terraform.module.hcl. Looking at the contents of the module lock file, it lists out each module with the key, the source, the version, the directory where it found those files and a hash of those files, which can be used for comparison. Now let's assume that I've checked this module lock file into source control and shared my configuration out with somebody else and they run Terraform in it locally and they wanna make sure that nothing has changed about the modules that are being pulled down from the public registry. Well, they can run Terahash check to validate that the modules being pulled down from the public registry still match what's in the lock file. And Terahash reports back that all modules match the mod lock file. Let's make some alterations to the mod lock file to see what happens if terahash check does not pass. I'll delete the label module from the module lock file and also alter the hash for the VNet module. Now let's pull the terminal back up and I'll run terahash check again. This time it reports on non-matching and missing modules in two separate tables. The first one lists out the fact that the VNet module no longer matches the hash. And the second one tells us that the label module is not included in the lock file. If we want to update that lock file, we can do that with the terahash upgrade command. Let's see what that looks like. The terahash upgrade command will list out the modules that are found as well as what change is required to the existing lock file. The VNet module needs to be updated so that the hash is the correct hash and the label module needs to be added to the lock file. I'll confirm these changes by entering yes, but you can use the auto approve flag if you want to skip the prompt. Going back to the module lock file, the label module is back in there and the VNet module has been updated appropriately. And that in a nutshell is the Terahash project. It's meant to add lock file functionality for Terraform modules, as well as record a hash to make sure that nothing nefarious is happening with modules that you pull down from the public registry. They should match the hash that's currently in the module lock file if the version hasn't changed. 
I'm still looking to add additional functionality to the tooling, and I'd love to hear your suggestions on what else you'd like to see in this tool. So if you don't mind, and this is the ask, I ask that you go over to GitHub, go to the repository, download the binary for your system, and take it for a spin. Let me know if you encounter any problems and what enhancements you'd like to see in the tool. This is my very first time writing anything in Go, and I'm really excited to see what suggestions other folks come up with that could improve the usability and the functionality of Terahash. That's gonna do it for today. Thank you as always for watching. Until next time, keep calm and Terraform on. Thank you.